Hey everyone, I'm Enrico from John B. Anthony Company. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to stream yourself performing music. I'm gonna show you how to get the audio side of things dialed in very easily. If you're a DJ, a singer-songwriter, or even a duo, you'll see how easy it is to get started. To help us accomplish this, I've got an Allen & Heath Z10 FX with me. It's got four channels, including two that have DI inputs, built-in effects, and most importantly for streaming, it's got a USB out. This particular mixer is the traditional board that you've taken to your nightclub or coffee house gig, so it's very helpful in a lot of situations. To use this for streaming, we're going to connect it over a USB to a computer, and it'll function similarly to a two-channel interface. First, let's set it up for a singer. I've got a vocal mic right here that I'm going to be plugging in to channel one. So you can plug in a dynamic or a condenser mic in here on channel one, and if you're using a condenser mic, which I am, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to turn on phantom power. Next up, we're gonna to wanna to adjust the gain so that the mic is loud enough to hear the singer, but not distort when they get loud. After that, we're gonna make sure we engage our high pass filter button to remove any excess rumble and muddiness. The next four knobs are all for EQing your voice. Dial this into taste, it's easy to add studio shimmer using the high frequency knob or make your voice sound fuller with the low frequency knob. This yellow knob right here is our effect send. This is how we're gonna send our vocal to a reverb or a delay. The aux knob is going to be how loud the mic is in our headphones. From there, we have a pan knob and this is gonna be where our vocal sits in our left and right stereo field. This next knob is for level. This is to balance out the different input volumes with each other. You're gonna want the singer louder than the instrument, but make sure the instrument is still heard, ensuring a professional balance. Keep in mind that the level and the aux knob buttons are gonna control your volume independent of each other. The aux is the headphone volume and the level is part of your streaming volume. Last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you hit that record button for this particular channel. To hook up a guitar, I'm gonna take the output of an acoustic and plug it right into the channel three high Z input. After that, we can repeat everything that we just did for the voice microphone, making sure to adjust the level at the end so that the guitar is not as loud as the vocal and the vocal remains the prominent feed that we hear in both the aux and level knobs. Now let's head over to the effects section. The voice and the guitar are gonna sound very upfront and dry. To give this some polish and life, we're gonna add some reverb. I've already set up the effects end for each channel. Now let's select a reverb using the buttons that we have over here to scroll and select the reverb that we'd like. Next, we're gonna adjust the aux and the effects level for where we want to send the reverb and make sure it's appropriate for what we're hearing in our headphones and what we're hearing in our stream. Again, make sure that you hit the record button when you're done so that the stream gets to hear your reverb. So normally in a performance, it's nice to hear yourself back and monitor everything so you can adjust your playing. To do this, we're gonna be plugging in headphones. By default, we're gonna hear everything in our main mix, which is all the red knobs on the bottom. If you're over in your headphone source select, make sure you hit record so you can hear everything that's being sent to your computer. This is a good thing to check before you go live so you can hear what your stream is being fed and make sure there's no issues. As a performer, you may want to interact with your audience as well or hear yourself with a different mix. Press aux and adjust the aux levels to control your personal headphone mix. The Z10 FX has the ability to route the audio back into your headphones and not loop it through the recording output. As long as nothing is plugged into the stereo jacks of stereo two, the computer can play back through this channel. Turn up stereo two's aux knob to control the computer level in your headphones while making sure you don't hit the record button. This will ensure that you hear your audience and they're not being looped back through. And that's gonna cover the actual setup of the mixer. Let's head over to the computer and set up OBS to connect with the mixer. To connect to Twitch or Facebook Live, we'll first need to connect all our equipment to a free software called OBS. I'll have a link in the description for both PC and Mac versions. OBS is a freeware that allows you to connect your camera and audio equipment to broadcast to streaming platforms. Before we can connect OBS, let's head over to Twitch and grab my stream key. This is a unique passcode to your Twitch account so you can securely pair your Twitch with OBX in your User profile, you're gonna click down here at settings, then head over to channels and videos. Here we have our stream key, which is securely being not shown. Make sure you click copy over here, and then once you've done that, we can head over to OBS. First thing we wanna do, head over into our settings, 
then click on stream. Here we, for our service, we have Twitch selected. Here you can see a bunch of other options that we do have. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna right click to paste my stream key. Then I'm gonna hit apply and okay out of this menu. Next thing we need to do is head over to sources. First thing I wanna do, click this plus sign. Audio input capture. Here I'm gonna be adding my Z10 effects and I'm gonna label it. Now you have to select the device. Our Z10 effects is gonna show up as USB audio codec on our computer. Make sure you hit that and press OK. Now we have it listed down here in our digital audio mixer for Twitch. Last thing we wanna do, hit this plus sign again and we're going to add a video capture device. Now I'm gonna be using my FaceTime camera to get in the video. Here we're gonna to go to device again and select my built-in camera. Hit OK, and you can adjust it for the size that you want to display. Once you're done fine-tuning everything, you have one last step. All you have to do is go over here and click Start Streaming. That setup is gonna be pretty similar for all the other different streaming platforms. Just be aware that you'll need a different streaming key for each service that you use. That's everything you need to do to start streaming yourself quickly and professionally. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer. Don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Please take a sec and subscribe to JBA University and click the bell if you wanna get notified when we put out more content. Thanks and I'll see you next time. Thank you.